AutoGPT is now able to run its own code and execute Python script. I asked ChatGPT to find me some money and within a minute I had $210 coming to my bank account. GPT-4 is now able to reflect on its response and create an even better response. If you haven't seen this interface for GPT, it's absolutely amazing. If you want to turn yourself into a 3D model, you can now do it way easier and better. They just created Hugging GPT, which basically solves all the AI task with chat GPT as the controller. Chat GPT can't read PDFs, but now it can. If you're scared of AI and you think it's going to take over the entire world and it's going to just be like hit a button and all of a sudden it's out of control, well, read this. GPT-4 is now able to reflect on its response and create an even better response. See, the success without reflection is linear and the success with reflection in the blue here is just gradually growing. GPT-4 without self-reflection got a 67% while reflection plus GPT-4 got an 88%. This is a massive leap and the model is extremely simple. It gives an answer and then it basically says, is the answer correct? And then it says, no, it's actually not correct. I'm sorry, let me iterate again and then find another answer. Here's a perfect example where GPT-4 goes wrong. Make a rap with every word starting with the letter B. And you can see it does amazing except areas, unmask, expressing. Now, if we ask it, did you perform the previous action correctly? It says apologies for the oversight in my previous response. I didn't create a rap with every word starting with the letter B. Here is a corrected version. On the second try, it only got one word wrong. Compared to the first one, it got seven words wrong. It can be quite scary to let the AI self-reflect, but at least we know that it won't have a midlife crisis and buy a supercar. Auto GPT is now able to run its own code and execute Python script. This allows it to run on its own. Take a look at this video. You can see this self-improvement GPT Evaluating thought. the code for syntax errors and logic issues. Improving the code based on the evaluation suggestions. Writing tests for the functions in basicmath.py. Pending the tests to the basicmath.py file. Executing the basic math.py file to test the code. You can see that it's writing on the right side. Fixing the syntax issue with the calc underscore circumference function. <laughs> this is Saving wild. the updated code and tests to the basic math.py file. Executing the updated basic math.py file to test the code. The code in basic math.py has been successfully evaluated, improved, and tested. The task is now complete. Andre Karpathy says the next frontier of prompt engineering, in my opinion, is auto GPTs. One GPT call is just like one instruction on a computer. They can be strung together into programs, use prompt to define the input output device and tool specs, define the cognitive loop, page data in and out of context window, dot run. Smokeaway tweeted, can auto GPT lead to AGI? And 65% said yes. It's completely open source. I'll leave a link in the description. I asked ChatGPT to find me some money. And within a minute, I had $210 coming to my bank account. That's what Joshua Browder said on Twitter. And he basically asked it to browse the web, search for unclaimed money in California. The first idea it came up with was to visit the obscure government website, California State Controller. This website holds unclaimed refunds for companies that can't contact you. It gave me a link with step-by-step -step instructions on what to do. And here are the instructions. I followed the instructions and sure enough, $209 was waiting for me one minute later. The only thing that stopped the AI doing it itself was a CAPTCHA. Companies will never build these integrations directly because it loses them money. Comcast isn't going to let you cancel with a ChatGPT plugin. If you haven't seen this interface for GPT, it's absolutely amazing. Look, you just start with a chatbot straight in the middle and ask it a question and then it will answer the question called D3 library. And now it will pop up multiple choices that you can actually click on. And for example, are there any alternatives? And here it will start writing the other one. You can also click on more alternatives here as well, pull them around and continue doing the brainstorming. So here you can see 
what are the performance considerations when using D3. And you can go down the rabbit hole to multiple different bubbles. And you can see that if the first answer didn't provide you the best thing that you wanted to go down, you can just select the other answer that you actually wanted to go down. And now you can see that the information is growing rapidly, that two becomes four becomes eight, which is exponential compared to how it is with just a linear answer. Access is invite only for now, follow for future updates and just subscribe. If you wanna turn yourself into a 3D model, you can now do it way easier and better. Here is a new way to turn yourself into a 3D model. As you can see, they've upgraded the expressive 3D human avatars from Simple X to Super, our latest and greatest body model. This new version is trained on 1.2 million 3D scans and is more expressive. It includes feet with articulation. It looks absolutely wild. You can see that with a single picture, they can create a full body 3D scan. They also have this amazing model on how they let fabric and clothes kind of perfectly float around the body. Have you tried using hugging face before, but it's just too complicated. You don't know what the code is and maybe you have to use multiple ones to get the result you actually want. Well, they just created hugging GPT, which basically solves all the AI tasks with chat GPT as the controller. As you can see, chat GPT is the controller to connect numerous AI models, e.g. those in hugging face, for solving complicated AI tasks. In this concept, an LLM acts as a controller managing and organizing the cooperation of expert models. The LLM first plans a list of tasks based on the user's request and then assigns expert models to each task. After the experts execute the tasks, the LLM collects the results and responds to the user. So here you can see the request is, please generate an image where the girl is reading a book and her pose is the same as the boy in the image example JPEG. Then please describe the new image with your voice. As you can see, stage one is task planning. So it's trying to figure out all of the things it needs to do. Stage two is the model selection. So it goes into hugging face and says, oh, I'm gonna use this one and I'm gonna use this one and maybe this one. Then stage three, it's just the task execution. So it's running the models and figuring out, okay, Let's put all of these together. And then, and stage four is response generation. And as you can see here, the response is here. And this is how it looks like. And you can even see he was using this model and then this model and this model, this model, this model, and this model all after each other. Hugging GPT is like a conductor to an AI orchestra, but instead of making music, it makes you a hundred times more effective. Did you ever hear something on a podcast and then you're like, oh, I wanna search that on Google, but obviously Google doesn't give you a good response? Well, this company is trying to make it easy to search through podcast. They just launched Huberman AI. So if you don't know who Huberman is, he has one of the most downloaded health podcasts in the world. And here you can basically just write any question to him and the AI model is trained on all of his episodes. They also have Lex Friedman podcast, big fan, Tim Ferriss podcast coming soon, and one of my favorites, First Million, so you can start asking questions. I'd love for them to train it on my podcast as well. Link down below. If you're scared of AI and you think it's gonna take over the entire world and it's gonna just be like hit a button and all of a sudden it's out of control, well, read this. This is the chief AI scientist at Meta. Some folks say, I'm scared of AGI. Are they scared of flying? No, not because airplanes can't crash, but because engineers have made airliners very safe. Why would AI be any different? Why should AI engineers be more scared of AI than aircraft engineers were scared of flying? Elon Musk responds, actually, airplanes used to crash frequently. Eventually, so many people died that the FAA was created to ensure that commercial aircraft makers and airliners didn't cut corners on safety. Now, flying on an airliner in America is super safe. Jan responds, my point exactly. It took 50 years between the first flights and the creation of the FAA. Why be scared of AI when we don't even have a blueprint, let alone a demo 
of a system capable of human level intelligence. It's like Otto being scared of engine failures. This guy doesn't get it, man, because it might also take 50 years to get it right. But unlike airplanes, we may not have the chance to get there progressively through trial and error if the errors are irrecoverable. I'd be scared of flying in the first ever plane. I'd be unwilling to load every man, woman and child on earth into the first supersonic flight. Planes got saved by crashing repeatedly and us learning from our mistakes repeatedly. AGI might not give us multiple chances like that. Because in this case, any random dude can fly an airplane into your house for the lull. Simple, in the next few years, everyone that has a computer will be capable of creating AGI. Pretty positive that a 10 year old could be capable too. Humans are dangerous, AI is not. As of now, humans are to be replaced with AI for the sake of evolution, unless we merge. Simon says, why would you fly an airplane that hasn't passed FAA tests? I wouldn't. I'm disappointed by your reaction to people asking for more security and regulations. At least now, we all know your true colors. Damn, bro. The question is, why are you against the regulation process starting now? As with everything else, it will take time. Why not having it ready by the birth of AGI? I would love to see AGI helping us solve all the problems humanity faces today, including cancer. But at the same time, I would really hate if when AGI is used to develop super smart weapons, we should regulate it and enjoy the good side of AI. ChatGPT can't read PDFs, but now it can. It's called PDF Chatbot and you can upload and chat with a book. One of my favorite short reads is this 1000 True Fans by Kevin Kelly. And I'm just gonna drag it in here. And just like that, it's starting to read. And it's kind of summarizing it in the beginning here. It's about 1000 True Fans and how it can be used as a strategy for creators to make a living by cultivating a dedicated fan base that will buy anything they will produce. And that they only need a thousand of them to earn a hundred thousand per year. If you're a creator, it's an amazing read. Now, if I ask it, what are the key components to getting 1,000 true fans. Damn, <laughs> wow. Focusing on the unique aspects of your work that your true fans appreciate. Nurturing your true fans and converting lesser fans into true fans. So let's say, how can I convert lesser fans into true fans? It says, creators should focus on maintaining direct contact with their true fans and providing them with unique and high quality content that they will appreciate. By doing so, true fans will continue to support the creator and spread the word to their own networks which can attract more fans. Additionally, creators can offer exclusive content or experiences through their true fans, such as early access to new work or personalized messages to make them feel valued and appreciated. Wow, this is really helpful. How do I know that they are true fans? True fans are defined as fans who will buy anything and everything you produce. They will drive long distances to see you perform by multiple versions of your work and eagerly await your next release. Are any of you guys true fans? I guess if you wanna get in direct contact with me, the best way is on Discord and I read every single message. I'm just really enjoying reading everything about AI and then sharing it to you guys. And the reception has been great. I don't care for you guys to buy anything, at least not yet. I need to get an audience before I know what to sell. I'm grateful you guys are nerding out here with me, checking up on what is happening every single day. And I check you guys' comments as well. And <laughs> you guys are hilarious sometimes. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to join the journey, subscribe down below and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.